What's up guys, this is Wences. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about personal development for INFJs and how to create an epic life on your terms. Today we're talking about INFJ dating, in particular what INFJs need in a partner and in a relationship. The things we read most of the time say this is the best partner, so let's say another personality type or that we need other intuitives, but I want to go a little bit deeper because I believe in regards to our personal development, it makes a lot of sense to look at the particular traits I'm going to talk to you about today. Before we get started, I want to remind you we have officially pre-launched the bootcamp, meaning you have access to the early bird price until July 4th and July 11th we start with our first session, all the information you find below. It's no secret that it's hard for INFJs to be in a relationship. A lot of us are single for a long time. I was single probably for eight years before I started my current relationship and there's like so much pain that comes with it. I know this by heart. I've seen it with my clients. This is something we struggle with a lot and it has also a lot to do with the fact that we are a little bit different than the norm. It also has a lot to do with the fact that we are sensitive and that we really care about strong emotionality. Very often there's this comparison of Romeo and Juliet as in this is the kind of intensity we want and this is the kind of intensity I craved for my entire life when I was younger. So particularly in my teenage years in my early 20s and I have learned that this got me in a lot of trouble. Now it's completely different because I've actually gone overboard so much that I know, okay, I got to find my balance here. I have to find a way where I feel secure, where I feel safe, where we have a future together and then the emotionality can grow from that. But I'm not willing to sacrifice my own well-being in order to feel really strong emotions all the time. Because you have to understand these strong emotions, they don't come from happiness. They don't come from contentment. They come from insecurity. They come from you're not getting what you want. And and so you continuously keep riding this wave that keeps pulling you down. But on the other hand, all of those deep emotions, they really make us feel alive. So we get back to the fact that we want to feel alive. So when you're looking for a relationship or you want to change certain things about your relationships and you think about what do I need? We always need to take under consideration that we first off need to feel alive. We also need to have a future plan. So dating somebody who doesn't have long-term intentions with you will cause you trouble because it doesn't correspond with our way of thinking. We have visions, we have dreams, we have a plan we want to get to and either that person fits into that or they don't. And the third point, and I believe this is something that is rarely talked about, is that we need a person who allows us to be ourselves, who allows us to express as much of our authentic self as possible. And then you might say, well, okay, then I'm going to go for other intuitives, but that's not always the case. It's not about are you dating an intuitive or are you dating a sensor? It's about how secure is that person with themselves and allows you to be yourself without feeling like it hits against their ego. I've had great relationship when it comes to friendships or dating when it comes to sensors and I've also had this with intuitives and vice versa. This really shouldn't be something that you should actively be looking for. Oh okay I want to date an intuitive or oh I want to date a sensor. So you might ask why would I be looking for a sensor? Well in a lot of cases when we're looking for an escape you'll see that you'll be attracted to people who have a strong sense of extroverted sensing. It's our inferior function. That is actually the case when you want to escape from your own life and it looks differently. So this could be an ESTP, this could be an ESFP, but this could very well be an ENFJ or an ENTJ because they too express their extroverted sensing a lot because that's their third function. So that's their hidden agenda. That's the thing they want. And we also see this sometimes even with INFPs. And you might say, well, an INFP doesn't have any extroverted sensing at all. That is correct. But they have introverted sensing. And this introverted sensing looks a lot like willpower. So why is that an escape for us? Well, look at your life. Look how it's going right now. And then think of all the people that you were interested in the past or your current partner. Were they a solution for you? Were they something where you felt like, okay, this gives me a way out of my current circumstance. And for a lot of INFJs, that is the case. And so for example, even an INFP, you'll see, okay, they want to go somewhere. They have plans. They want to go out, whatever it is, they have some kind of plan about what they want. And we very often don't want to take responsibility of deciding what is good for us. We rather be the sidekick. We rather be the helper, the consultant, the person who helps the other person 
get better, but we don't put ourselves first. And so we gotta be honest with ourselves. Is this something that we want? And if this is the case, there's no foul in that. That wouldn't be a bad thing altogether. You just have to be aware of it. And if you choose that, then be very aware of the consequences that this will bring. Because every single time you become somebody else's sidekick, it also means you will give up on your dreams. It doesn't mean that they won't happen at all, but it means that you lose control of it. Because if you get in situations like this, you automatically care more about helping the other one fulfill their dream than for you to fulfill your dream. And I, as somebody who loves to help people, I used to do that so often and I didn't see anything bad with it, but I really learned with time that I was losing myself in this whole process. Now, I also get to help people. I get to help my clients, I get to help the people around me, but I don't do it at the expense of my own well-being. And so once you've gotten to this point where you decide, okay, I wanna make sure that my path stays my path and whoever comes into my life is a contribution to it. So we stand side by side and then we look forward and every single person goes their path through life, we just go it together. That is the second option. When the first option is that you look towards each other and you're the solution. And this is not something that only happens to INFJs. I know many partnerships that are built on this and I don't believe that we are able to overcome this completely ever. But if you have the intention of stepping up your life and creating that epic life you want to, then you have to actively make a choice of this is where I want to go. So how does this change with our choice of partners? Well, as I said, I don't believe at all that if you are in that first category where you look for a solution, you're going to go for an ESTP. But when you look for personal development and you look for a partner, you're going to go for an ISTJ. This is just an example. This can be vice versa. It doesn't matter. It always comes down to what is your plan? and what are your boundaries? So if you don't know where you wanna go, you're much more likely to give up everything that you want and everything that you know in order to make a relationship work. So before you step into this, make a plan, make goals, work with the five pillars, guys. Make a plan of this is where I want my life to be. And then think about how would that person have to look like that would fit into my life and would help me build that life of my dreams. So if you want, for example, to be more productive in a way that is constructive to you, in a way that doesn't overwhelm you, you're probably not gonna have that much success if you get together with somebody who has no goals of their own. It just won't work. They will hold you back. You will feel like, okay, now I wanna take the next step and there will always be that person. And in the end, you're an entity. You cannot move forward if the other person doesn't want to. The dreams and the goals, they don't have to be the same, but they have to be able to correspond. Spot. So if one of you is being held back by the other's way of approaching life, you'll get to a point where you will feel and see a problem. And this is not something where you have to feel like, oh, I'm a bad person. I rather choose my goals and my dreams over relationships and over love. It's just that you're an INFJ. You're a person with vision. And if you are in a situation where you know there's no way for us to grow because that person is just stagnant, then how is that supposed to work? You can of course say, okay, I'm going to encourage that person. I'm going to help them, but it won't really help because in the end, it's just enabling. You're saying, I stay with you no matter what. But if you choose to say, I'm going that direction and either you fit into my life while I'm going forward, that would fit. But if it only works when we're both stagnant, you will never be really satisfied with it. It will work for some time. It will create a lot of emotionality, but it's not the thing that will fulfill you in the long term. So once you've gotten to a point where you say, okay, so I'm going to move forward. I have a life vision. This is my path. And everybody who comes into my life has to be able to keep up with it. Then your first thought will be, well, then nobody's going to fit. Nobody's going to want to keep up with me, but that's not the case. But you'll only know this once you decide I'm going forward and there's no turning back. I'm not going to be stagnant anymore. I'm not going to be passive. I'm not going to wait for things to happen. I'm not going to look outside from a glass window and think, thinking life is happening out there. I'm taking charge of my life. When you do this, you automatically will repel 
all the people who before may have had interest in you because you were stagnant. Because maybe you showed a part of you that pretended like, oh, you're so satisfied with the way the other person is living their life. Although in the back of your mind, you always want more. You will repel them right away. They will not fit with you. And at the same time, you'll attract people who go their own way, see that in you as well, and think this would be a great match. And once you've had this realization, and that is something that is a non-negotiable for you, the next thing, and I also mentioned this before, is that you need somebody who allows you to be yourself. And that doesn't mean that you feel like, oh, we have such a connection. I thought we had such a connection with an ENFJ once, and I was able to observe them, and I was able to understand them so well, and I thought, because I understand them so well, they would understand me. They would allow me to be myself. But that wasn't the case. Every single time I stepped into my power, I stepped into my greatness from an INFJ standpoint, and that will be uniquely you. That person couldn't handle it because it pushed up way too much to their ego. Again, I'm not saying this is how ENFJs are. I'm just giving an example that one person. So don't look at them like, oh, they're intuitives. We would understand each other so well. Look at them from a perspective of when I share things that maybe some people are put off by, but they're really my truth. If I share my intensity, if I share my emotionality, is that something that is appreciated, admired, and wanted? Is that something where the other person wants to know more about? Or is that something which makes people go away? That is the key point. That is what we have to consider when it comes to dating and relationships. We need people in our life who encourage us to be ourselves. And this also applies if you already are in a relationship. Maybe you've held back. Maybe you felt like if I express myself now, then who knows what's going to happen. But as you know, you wouldn't be rethinking your situation if everything was great. So if you feel like you're holding yourself back, it's time to express yourself, to really talk about your truth, to talk about those things which you're afraid of the other one might judge because you're way too deep, you're way too intense, whatever your fears are. And you'll see that your entire relationship dynamic will change. In some cases, it might not work out. In others, it might transform into something beautiful. You don't know that. But the only way you can really find out is if you decide, no matter what, my own own well-being has to come first and I will not allow any more in any current or future relationship for my authentic self to be silenced. Once you've made that decision and that commitment, you express that, then everything else comes after that. So that person either compromises, that person either applies themselves and are able and willing to create a new dynamic or they're not. But that is not the decision that is for you to make. Your decision is to show up to say no matter what, I'm not giving up on myself because no matter how important dating and relationships are, the most important relationship you'll have in your life is with yourself. So don't ever neglect that. I really hope that helped you and inspired you to take steps to create epic relationships on your terms. And remember to check out the bootcamp, the early bird price is on until July 4th. And if you wanna watch another video now that is in line with today's topic, then watch my other videos on INFJ dating. Like always guys, I wish you a wonderful wonderful day, a great week, and I talk to you next time. Bye.